Good evening, beloved. <clears throat> We've come tonight to our moments of meditation, our time of intercessory prayer and corporate prayer on this Tuesday night. I pray now that you would position yourselves both mentally, spiritually, and perhaps those of you can even position yourself physically as we prepare to lift our petitions unto our Father who is in heaven. Our scripture tonight, the 59th chapter of the book of Isaiah, verse number one. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, neither is his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. Tonight, as we prepare to call the names of those who are on our sick and shut-in list, and we pray for our members and those who are connected to the members of our church, let us not forget to also pray for the state of affairs of our city, our state, our country, and even our world. Seems as if we are living in perilous times. The scripture says that perilous times will come. Offer prayer for those who lost loved ones in the various major events that we've heard <clears throat> recently in our news, the derailing of the train, the bombing in Ukraine, even those who were found in the 18-wheeler tractor trailer, those who were seeking refuge in this country. And then for all those who are affected by senseless violence on a day-to-day -day basis, remember in prayer tonight, the family of Pastor Ronald Mouton Sr. and the East Bethel Church. And pray for his wife and children, the church family, and all those that connected and impacted by he and his ministry. Names we lift for prayer tonight, Deacon Archie and Marie Jones, Brother John and Brenda Brown, ask for our continued prayer, Ann Adams, Alta Williams, Evelyn Green, and her daughter, Ori Yancey, Deacon William, and Marjorie Warner, Marjorie Warner, Prince Thompson, continue to lift up Mother Mabel Shepherd, Reverend Wilbert Matthews, and Sister Joycelyn Matthews and Matthews, McNeil and Brown family. Deacon Leonard Bell, Deacon C.J. Taylor, Deacon David Jones, Senior, Deacon Norman Robertson, Rose Trailer, Mother Rose Trailer, Mother Verdell Jones, James Lynn Jones, 
Lisa and Delisa Nims, Mother Bernice Webb, Ronald Turban. Continue to lift up Sister Cami Jammer as she continues recovering. Cynthia Bell, Daryl Davis, Gloria Adams, Ben Joseph, Louis Jackson, celebrated his 90th birthday on Sunday. Rosemary Jones, Gloria Lamarck and the Lamarck family, Lula Jones and Sister D at the passing of her mother, Lavesta Vance, Andrew Yancey, Shannon Campbell, Barbara Mills continued to pray for Deacon Terry and Sister Terry and their family. June Holmes, Ernestine O'Brien and family. Adolphus and Joyce Presley. Carolyn Sears. Vicki Herndon. And all of her co-workers and all those who were affected by the fire at the company in which she's worked. Mother Iona Griggs, Carolyn Sears, Pastor James and Robbie Punch, the Trinity Church family, the Harris family, Norman Robertson, Marva Barnett, Denise Turban, continue to lift up Linda Doucette Livingston. Every day is a day of thanksgiving to her to still be with us. Laura Giddings, Kathy Chevalier, Joseph and Octavia Reed, Deputy Tommy Wilson, Val and Sidney Harris, Dolores Wilson, Thoy Kelly Jr., Mother Isalee Green, Add to our prayer list, Cassie Robinson is in a car accident, is in intensive care. She's connected to Sister Ireland, her family. We pray for the O'Neills, the Fosters, Margaret Grayson, Dorothy Moore, Sharon Warren. This time, I ask that we begin to pray now as Sister Ireland comes. Pray for Teresa Adams, her family. Sister Ireland comes now and leads us. Reverend and Sister Sammy Pratt, she leads us in prayer. Sister Ireland. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, wise and gracious Father, we just come before your throne of grace tonight to just praise you, glorify and magnify and lift up your holy name. For Lord, you are worthy of all praise, the highest praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh, gracious God. Father God, as we come standing in the gap, for the names that have been lifted up and called tonight for our state and city and government and world leaders. Lord, we just come lifting them all up before your throne of grace, Lord. Father God, because we know that you know each and every situation, Lord. What every person is going through, Lord, and we just come calling your name. Ask them for your tender mercies that you give us every morning. Oh, praise be to your name. Lord, we're just asking you to intercede in each individual's life, Lord. Strengthen them to go through their different trials and tests, Lord, 
until deliverance comes. Just stand on your word, Lord. Lift up your name. Know that you are God and you are God all by yourself. Know that there's nothing too hard for you to do or perform, oh Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, we praise your name, Lord. Oh, strengthen our hearts, oh Lord. Oh, Lord, let us just magnify and glory your name, Lord. Oh, Lord, for your faithfulness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we thank you. Lord, we're asking you to touch and heal the sick. Comfort the bereaved. Deliver the oppressed and depressed, oh Lord. Father, we ask you to go in every highway and byway, Lord. Bring peace. Bring joy. Bring deliverance, oh Lord. Oh, meet us at the point of our need, Lord. Help us to trust in you and to know that you are God Almighty. Hallelujah, that you are able to strengthen us, that you are able to keep us from being tired and weary, Lord, that you can lift us up on high, that you are the solid rock, Lord, on which we can stand, Lord, because all other ground is sinking sand. Oh, Father, we just thank you, Lord. Father, we're asking you to give us leaders who will fear you, Lord, and reverence you and seek you in how to make laws and uh, legislate and for the people, Lord, not for their own selfish needs, but for your people, oh Lord. We know you said in your word to render unto Caesar the things of Caesar's and the things of God for God. But Father God, you have the government upon your shoulders. Lord, you are our counselor. Oh, Lord, you are our advocate. And we just come before you asking you to look on our world, Lord, and all of these things that are going on in the world, Lord. Oh, we ask you to have mercy, Lord. We're asking you to change and turn things around for the better. But we know, oh, Lord, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we can ask or think according to the power that is within us, oh Lord. Oh, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have sent, oh Lord, to teach us and lead us and guide us in all things. Help us to trust in you. Help us to come to you and lay all our cares and burdens at your feet. But Lord, you care for us, Lord. Lord, you said you have inscribed our imprint in your hands, oh Lord. Oh, hallelujah, we thank you. We thank you because you hold us in your hand, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you because you keep us every day. Oh, Lord, we just give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. For, Lord, you anoint us out of head with oil. Lord, you help that our cup would overflow with your blessings, oh, Lord. Lord, you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies, oh Lord. Oh Lord, there is no weapon that is formed against us that can prosper. Oh Lord, we thank you because our Heavenly Father watches over us as you intercede for us day by day. All glory, honor, and power be to you, oh Lord. Oh Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, couldn't praise you enough. Oh, glory to your name. You. Glory to your name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you because you are a provider. You are a way maker. You are a shelter in the times of storm. Lord, you are a bridge over troubled water. Oh, you, praise be to God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My soul cries out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, thank God for saving me, for saving you. Oh, we thank 
him, Lord, that we are united as sisters and brothers in Christ. Oh, Lord, let us always be mindful to lift one another up every day in some kind of way, encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Your promises are yea and nay, Lord. You can do anything but fail. And we just give you the glory. And we give you the honor, Lord. Oh, because you inhabit the praises of your people, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just thank you and we glorify and magnify your holy name. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Since we've laid our burdens down, Lord. We lay them all down at your feet, Lord. No matter what it is, Lord. Oh, we just cry out to you, oh Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For there is no one like you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for your wonderful grace and your mercy. Lord, help us thank to know you, that your grace is sufficient for thank us, you, oh Lord. No matter what we're going through, you are able to make ways out of nowhere. Thank you, and we Father. just thank you, oh precious Lord. And now, Father God, I just ask all of these things in the name of Jesus. And it's come to an end, and this will be our little break coming up. I want to assure every sister and brother here of Greater Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Thank know you, that this does not close out lifting you up in prayer. Yeah. But you are lifted up every day in prayer. Your names are on the covenant list. And you still will be lifted up while we are on our little break until we return and meet here again yeah. in the name of Jesus. We yeah. ask you to remember our pastor tonight. Thank you, Continue to crown him in wisdom and knowledge, Lord, as he comes to teach and preach. His un God, your uncompromised word. We just ask you to bless him going in, bless him coming out. And Lord, remember we have a need for our church right now. So help us, Lord, yes. to find a way to, for finances to come that yeah. we might be blessed to do the things that need to be done, Lord, in your, in your sanctuary. This is your sanctuary. We are the church but we want to help your sanctuary so more people can come in and worship and we can serve the community better. So we're just asking you to open some windows and some doors and pour out a blessing over the Yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, that Lord. there shall not be enough room yes, to receive the overflow. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah, thank hallelujah. You, Father. Lord, we thank you and we most humbly, I most humbly ask it, oh Lord, in the precious name in the of name. Jesus, Lord, I thank you and I praise you, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank glory you, to Father. your name, thank glory you, to your name, oh thank yes, you, Lord, Father. thank you, Father God, thank you, Father. thank you, hallelujah, hallelujah, God bless you, God bless you. Good evening uh, to each of you. Thank God for you tonight, and thank God for your presence. Amen. How do you feel, Deacon Harper? You feel a little better today? All right, good. All right, Brother Kim, why are you on the wide angle? Amen. We thank God for you on tonight, uh, for being a part of our uh, intercessory prayer time. Thank you, Sister Ireland, for uh, that spirit feel prayer. Amen. Amen. Um, I know Sister Ireland knows how to get a prayer through. Amen. Her prayers, amen, touch and fall on the ears of the Most High God, our Father. And so we thank God for her, her praying spirit, her encouraging spirit. And thank God for you tonight uh, on this uh, last uh, Bible study before our summer break and uh, some of you may be traveling some of you may not be traveling but you might be like brother Kevin and just want a break on Tuesdays amen and so uh, uh, we're sensitive to that and understand that there's times you want to have time to do some of the things uh, that you need to do and uh, 
Don't stop praying. Amen. Even pause during these times and uh, whisper a prayer. And, uh, and we'll return back. We'll return back at the end of the summer. Uh, Sister Brenda Nims has twisted arms and ears and wheels to have a pie night tonight. And so uh, those of you who are in here are sure to have some pie. Anybody else on their way, amen, we might have to, you know, give you some ticket or something to come in and uh, we'll give them priority to first come, first serve, amen. Early, early bird gets the pie. All right. Uh, Sister, Sister Simmons, if you come on and give us a, a number, and after that, we'll go into our, our Bible trivia for, for tonight. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit says to me, with my whole heart, I agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes I'll say yes Lord yes to your will and to your ways I'll say yes Lord yes I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I will agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes Amen. God bless you tonight. All right. All right. God bless you. Let's go into our Bible trivia for tonight. Oh, boy, look at here. Boy, I see Mother Marie Jones is on Facebook watching. What you say, Lord? All right. God bless you. Let's go into our Bible trivia tonight. Our last Bible trivia before we resume back in September. Uh, can you answer the following questions about biblical characters? Complete the scriptures below and give the reference. Still working on y'all giving references. All right, okay. Question number one. Question number one. Saul has slain his thousands and David his blank. Whoa, boy, the women... The women after the, the uh, Operation Philistine, Philistines where uh, the army had gone out against the Philistines and David went out and slew Goliath with a slingshot and cut his head off with a sword and they were coming back home and the women began to sing a song. Amen. They were singing about King Saul. Saul has killed his thousands 
Amen. And, and that's pretty good. Think about that, right? <clears throat> One man killed thousands. That's a lot. Amen. And Saul should have felt pretty good. Huh? I mean, they're ascribing a thousand to him. But then the next part of the song kind of flipped Saul's witch switch. And he said, but David, <laughs> his tens of thousands. All right. That's 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 7 and verse 8. Give yourself a hand. That's pretty good. All right, y'all. Man, even, even our Facebook, our Facebook students have chimed in on that pretty, pretty fast. Sister Mama Robbie Punch, all right. Sister Tish Edwards, Sister May Helen, all right. And Minister Sammy Pratt, all right, all right, I see y'all. Question number two. The Spirit of God descended on Jesus in the form of a blank. Dove. Boy, I tell you, y'all must have been in the upper room with me. Dove, that's right. When did that happen? When did that happen? Anybody know when that happened? At his baptism. All right, that's right. When he began his public ministry at the age of 30, and he went to the Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist. And when Jesus went into the water and John prepared to baptize him, the heavens opened up and a voice from God sounded and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. And the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descended from heaven and lit on the shoulder of Jesus. Amen. God, boy, y'all know your Bible stories, don't you? I like it, I like it, I like it. All right, let's go to question number three. Quote, without the blank, 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 there is no forgiveness. NIV, without the blank of something, there could be no forgiveness. Now, I'm kind of throwing you off because I'm doing the NIV version, and yes, the King James Version says, without the blank, blank, there could be no remission of sins. But I'm looking for without what is that phrase in the blank. How are our sins forgiven? How are our sins forgiven? By Jesus' blood. So without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness or no remission of sin. All right. Without the shedding of blood. All right. The shedding of blood is what we're looking for. Thank you, Sister Juanita. The shedding of blood. That's Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness or remission of of sins. All right, we're good. Number four, which chapter in the Bible lists the heroes of faith? What chapter uh, in the Bible, what book and what chapter in the Bible lists the heroes of faith? Hebrews 11. Good job, Brother Ben Joseph. Come on, give it up for Brother Ben Joseph. Hebrews chapter 11. It's called the Hall of Faith. Amen. It lists the heroes of faith. Amen. And it starts out with, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And then it goes through, and by faith, you know, they received a good report. So the Hall of Faith. All right. Very good. All right. Hebrews chapter 11. Oh, I see y'all coming on in. Come on in, Facebook. Catch on up with us. There you go. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. Yes. All right, Sister Terry Carson. All right. I see you. I see you, Sister Sherry Carey. God bless you. All right. Our Sister Carla Abram, I see you. Let's go on to question number five. Peter says... That in the last days, blank will come. <laughs> I'm going to get you on this one. Peter said, in the last days, blank. Huh? I'm asking the questions. <laughs> Y'all supposed to be giving me answers, not asking questions. <laughs> Evil, nope, that's not the right answer. <laughs> I see you, Sister Claire Jackson. I see you, Sister Ernestine O'Brien. All right. Peter says that in the last days, blank will come. All right. 
nobody. Let me see. I'm going to Facebook. Let's see what y'all got. All right. Y'all saying, man, Peter said a lot of stuff. What part are you talking about? Okay, let me help you. Let's go to 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 3. I hear you, Brother Harper, say it. What is it? What's the, what, what, what will come? Scoffers. That's it, Deacon Harper. Give it up for Deacon Harper. Peter says, in the last days, scoffers will come. That's 2 Peter 3 and 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own, walking after their own lust. All right, very good. You know what a scoffer is? Oh, Mother Punch got that right. Anybody know what a scoffer is? Hmm? <laughs> Got to be something bad. I, I don't know if I want to be a scoffer, huh? It sounds like something bad. All right. Nobody knows what it is. Huh? Uh, it's to scoff something. What is to scoff? Like mock, right? Mockers, right? To mock, right? Uh, you know, people talk about folk and scoff and, you know, <clears throat> all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and scoffers will come, right? Very good. All right, let's go to question. Let me see where we're at with Facebook. Who's up here? Let's see. Uh, uh, second P. Yes, just the right point. Very good. All right. Scoffers. Yes, scoffers. Mockers. Yeah, mock. To mock. M-O-C-K-E-R. All right, let's go to question number six. What is the name of the tree that stands on both sides of the river of the water of life in the book of Revelation. What is the name of the tree that stands on both sides of the river of the water of life in the book of Revelation? <laughs> I don't hear y'all, y'all gotta be sure. Come on, shout it out, you know, hmm? Revelation chapter 22, go to it, go to it real quick. Just run, just run, just run there, 22. Look at Sister Ernestine O'Brien then chimed in. Yes, the tree of life, the tree of life, the tree of, I heard, but you didn't give me no, strong, you, you wasn't, no, no conviction behind it. It was like, you know, you, you weren't sure. Come on, blurt it out. All right. I heard you, brother. Talk. I heard something, brother Kelly, but I, you act like you weren't sure. <laughs> <laughs> the tree of life. That's it, the tree of life. All right. Verse, uh, chapter 22 of Revelation. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, hear what I say? Either side of the river, there was there a, the tree of life, which bore 12 kinds of fruit and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Y'all see that? Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 2, the tree of life. Yes. Um, was it a simulation of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden? Well, well, that was the tree God told them not to go to the tree and eat fruit off of the tree of knowledge. Right? Knowledge. Uh, yeah. Huh? Two trees where? Uh, Go, go, go there. Y'all ready? Y'all want to go there? Y'all asking me a question now. Let's go to Genesis then. We're going to see how many trees was in the garden. There's a whole bunch of trees in the garden. But now y'all want to know what, when God gave some instructions about a tree. Y'all get into one of my questions later, but we'll go ahead and, and get, get to it. Let's go to Genesis. We're going to go to chapter 2. I'm going to start with verse 7. I'm going to start with verse 7. 
And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of a garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. How many trees? The Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight, right? Then we get a semicolon, the tree of life also, all right, in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, all right? So there's a lot of trees, all right? But he brings out these two particular trees, right? All right. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden, all right? So now, you, is your question, is that the same trees? Because this, they weren't not in, they were not in uh, it says that they were in a garden eastward of Eden. All right? And say they were in the garden of Eden, they were in a garden eastward of Eden. All right? And so when we get to Revelation, where are we talking about now? Revelation 22. No, where, where are we in Genesis, I mean in Revelation chapter 22? Where is, where, where is that whole scene taking place that John is talking about? Huh? It what? All right, in, in the new paradise, all right, new paradise. I'm going to create a new heaven and a new earth, all right? A new paradise. Yes, Sister Ireland. Mm-hmm. Where it mentions where you see that 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 that's a concordance thing where it talks about a tree of life. Was well, it the same tree of life? Couldn't be the same tree of life because God has we, we, now when we get He's created a new heaven and a new earth, right? For the old things, former things are passed away, right? And everything is new, okay? All right. Question number seven. One question number seven. How many bowls of water did Gideon squeeze out of his fleece? How many of y'all remember the story of Gideon? Hmm? When, when, God, when God approached Gideon, right, and they were preparing to go against uh, uh, those Midianites and the worships are worshipers of Baal, right? And Gideon is a judge, and they're going to execute God's judgment upon them and uh, pull the army together. And Gideon had this massive army, and God tells them what? Oh, God, that army, that army, that army, that army is. Too much, right? Too much, too much, right? Got, got too many, right? And then uh, Gideon uh, asked the Lord, if you're with me, to show me a sign, right? Show me a sign. And uh, as a matter of fact, Gideon had 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 an encounter with God through an angel and didn't even perceive that when Genesis chapter, I mean, we're in uh, Judges chapter 8, around verse 20, 22, somewhere along in there. Uh, he, was, he was in the presence of an angel and did not know that he was encountering an angel face to face. And after his encounter with that angel, and uh, the Lord said to him, peace be unto you, and fear not, you shall not die. You know, whenever they see an angel, they're ready to you know, they think it's time to die. And uh, he ended up building an altar there and called the place Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. And uh, when God was giving Gideon instructions, and uh, I'm 
people need to throw down the altars of Baal and, and uh, Gideon wanted to know, God, are you really with me? I'm a judge. I'm your man. Are you really with me? If you're with me, uh, can you give me a sign? Um, and uh, God, God hears Gideon's prayer and uh, gives him a sign. Uh, first sign that Gideon asked for when chapter 8, verse 37, if I put a fleece on the ground, God, 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 are you going to save Israel by me? Are you going to use me to do this task? Are you going to say, if, if you are, then God, will you show me a sign? You know, I got, I got 300 fellas. Show me a sign. And so he says, I'm going to put a fleece of wool on the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry on all the earth beside it, then I'll know that you will save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. And so he went to sleep, woke up the next day, looked at the fleece and wrung the fleece out, right? Would do. And the answer to our question was one bowl of water, right? But that wasn't enough for Gideon. Gideon said, okay, God, don't be angry with me. <laughs> Please, I pray you one more time. <laughs> Show me, another, show me a sign so I really know. Listen, let once more with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece. And then upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night. For it was dry upon the fleece only. And there was dew on the ground. All right? And then he got up. Took them 300. Let's go. All right? So uh, how, many, how, many, how many bowls of water? Squeezed out of the fleece, one bowl of water. I know that was more than you, than you asked for. I always give you more than you asked for. I have to go back and do a sermon series on, on Gideon. Um, verse 8, huh? Yeah, you got a song about that? All right, all right. Let's go to question number 8. You wrote a song, you said. Let's go to question number 8. In what book of the Bible do we read the words, for the love of money is the root of all evil? Not talking about, not talking about the, the temptations. The OJ, I'm sorry, the OJs, I'm sorry, the OJs, the OJs, that's it, I'm sorry, the OJs. What book of the Bible do we read the words, for the love of money is the root of all evil? I heard Proverbs, that's not the correct answer. Dr. Betty says it's in the New Testament. That is a correct statement. 1 Timothy 6 and 10. Let's go there. 1 Timothy 6 and 10. 1 Timothy 6 and 10. Make you do things. Do things. Huh. <laughs> For the love of money. People will kill their own brother. Uh, y'all got it yet? Y'all better hurry up and get it because we quoting the words to the song. All right, y'all have it? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. What does it say? For the love of money is the root of all evil. All right? Make sure when you say that phrase or refer to that that you say it correctly. Money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money. That is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. All right. God bless you. Let's go. Let's go to question number nine. In what book of the Bible do you find the words, it is more blessed to give than, that should be than to receive. I'm sorry, Brother Kevin, that should be than. That's my typing error. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Not in the book of Matthew. It is in the New Testament, Dr. Betty Smith. Brother Ben, it's not, it's, it's, it's a book right after the Gospels. What's the book right after the Gospel? What's the book right after the Gospel? There's four Gospels. What's the book right after the fourth Gospel? Acts. The book of Acts. That's it. That's it. 
It's in Acts, the book of Acts. Chapter 20. Chapter 20 of Acts, verse 35. Anybody want to read it? All right, Acts chapter 20, verse 35. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Just think about it. If you're on the giving end, that means you've been blessed, right? You're blessed to be a blessing, right? Huh? If you're on the receiving end and someone's giving to you, you're, blessed, you're receiving the blessing, right? All right, it's more blessed to give than to receive, all right? Because it would just intimate that the giver has more than the one who's asking, right? Than the receiver, right? Okay. And let me ask you this. Can you beat God giving? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Doesn't he have more? Whatever you need, God's got it. He's got it all in his hand, right? You can't, you can't beat God giving. Huh? All right, all right. <laughs> He's like, y'all finna get happy up in here. They got hand, hands waving and everything. Hallelujah. You can't beat God giving. Amen, amen. Yeah, and it, somebody said if the Lord don't do nothing else, he's already done enough, all right? But I'm glad he keep on doing more. I'm glad, I'm glad Lamentations is in there. Say his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faith. Morning by morning, new mercies. <laughs> I see. I don't need yesterday's mercy. I need today's mercy. And on tomorrow, today's mercy ain't going to do me no good. I'm going to need tomorrow's mercy. And his mercies are new every, every morning. Great. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. All right. Verse number 10. Let's get number 10 before we get to shouting up in here. Verse number 10. Yes. That's right, sister boy. No matter how you try. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Question number 10. Earthly treasures are destroyed by three things. What are they? Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, because they can be destroyed by three things. What are they? Huh? Moth? What else? Rust? What else? Thieves can break in and steal, right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. There we are, Brother Ben. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. As Jesus shares with them in his long discourse on the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 6. The attitude starts in chapter 5, but look at it as he extends this extended discourse with them. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But what are you going to do? But lay up for yourselves, verse 20, treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, for where? Your treasure is, there will your heart be also. All right. God bless you. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Yes, sir. Moth, rust, and thieves. There you go. All right. Let's do our bonus question. Let's do our bonus, bonus question tonight. Bonus question tonight. The character, the Bible characters, Samson, David, and Benaniah all have one thing in common. What is it? The Bible characters, Samson, David, and Benaniah all have one thing in common. What is it? Wait, let me stop. Just time out. I heard, a, I heard a response, an answer, and I need to deal with that answer. I heard king. And uh, I have to address that. That's not correct. 
uh, Samson was not a king. Samson was a judge. All right. David was a king. Okay. So that's not it. All right. I, you didn't have to do it like that, Brother Kevin. All right. And Brother, brother Walker's doing this. I don't know if he's trying to say strong, strength. That's not it. They all had a what? They all seemed to have a specific mention that God had given them. That's not it. What did you say, Dr. Benny? They were men after God's own heart. No, only David was called a man after God's own heart. Right, y'all still, y'all still think? Let me go. Let me go and see what Facebook have to say. They, they you know, they, they, they own it. Let's see what they got to say, y'all. Y'all give it up in here. Y'all shout out, Sister Ireland. Did you say anything that I did not hear you? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's look at the first one. Let's look at the first one. Let's look at Samson first. Go to Judges. They all killed somebody. That last minute threw it in. Uh, that's not the correct answer. It's close, but that's not the correct answer. All right, let's go to Judges chapter 14, verse 5 and 6 for Samson. Judges. Judges chapter 14. Verse 5 and 6. Y'all ready? Judges chapter 14, verse 5. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Tamni and came to the vineyards of Tamni. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore him as he would have torn a kid. And he had nothing in his hand but he told not his father nor his mother what he had done. What did Samson just do? He killed a lion. All right. Okay. What do they have in common? Oh, y'all. See, y'all cheated. Y'all got the first one, so you figured out by, <laughs> by progressing. Huh? All right. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34, 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 and through 36. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose, arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defiled the armies of the living God. All right. So we see David killed a lion and a bear. What you saying, Brother Walker? Huh? He what? Where, where, do, you, where, do, where do you see... Where do you see a sword in that? It just said he smote him. Hmm? He killed him. We're not going to put in what ain't in there. <laughs> All right. Samson killed a lion with his bare hands, right? David said, huh? He caught the lion, huh? And the bear and caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him. And slew both the lion and the bear. I don't know what he slew him with. Now, only time we hear David had a sword up until now is when Saul tried to give David his sword. And David said, I don't need your sword. I'm not going to use what you have. You scared to use it. But I'm going to use what I have. And what did David have? He had a slingshot. 
Right. And he took that slingshot and gathered up some stones. All right. Five smooth stones. And he slew Goliath with how many of them stones? Just one. Some, somebody postulates and they say, well, Sam, uh, 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 Goliath had four other brothers. <laughs> and so if they wanted to try to come on, he had another stone for each one of them. All right, now Benaniah. Benaniah is not a name we all hear very, very, very frequently. Uh, when Pratt got in there, they killed, they all killed a lion, but I don't know if, when he came in with that answer. But yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Let's do, let's do Benaniah. Benaniah, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel chapter 23. That's why Bible trivia is fun, because you get to, you know, when you answer questions, you get to go through other Bible stories. We're looking at verse number 20. Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 20. And Benaniah, the son of Jodai, Jehoda, the son of a valiant man of Kazil, who had done many deeds, and he slew the two sons of Ariel of Moab, he went down also and slew a lion in the middle of a pit in time of snow. That's a bad joker, wasn't it? You say what? He, too, he killed two sons of Ariel, which, yeah, Ariel mean, might mean li uh, lion-like. Yeah, area. But then he also slew a lion in a pit in the snow. In the snow. And in a pit. All right? So uh, that's what those three Bible characters had in common. Yes, they all killed lions. Give yourselves a hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good, good. We got, got a chance to cover at least 10 different bases with that uh, Bible trivia, give you a little information on the answer. So that's what we enjoy about our trivia. Listen, it's, it's, uh, it's almost, I feel like Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett, right? Huh? Y'all know what Carol Burnett at the end of the show, what she's saying? Huh? No, the little song, the little jingle. I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh or two, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go, look at that. Boy, y'all know that, don't you? I know what generation I'm talking to. <laughs> so since uh, it's almost, it's near 8 o'clock and and uh, I want to finish out chapter 3, and when we resume, we'll pick up with, I mean, not chapter 3, principle 3. When we get back together, we'll start with principle 4. But I want to quickly give you these last things, and uh, we, we may rewind and talk about them when we come back together. But uh, eight consequences of ignoring the Lord's instruction believe is where we will finish out principle number three. There are eight consequences to ignoring, of ignoring the Lord's instruction. The first consequence, we end up listening to the wrong voice. <laughs> and the reference for this is Genesis chapter three, when uh, Satan uh, beguiled Eve uh, in the garden, we talked about earlier, uh, and uh, beguiled her with the fruit. And then uh, she then in turn presented it to Adam and they ate of the fruit in disobedience uh, to God. And so when you are disobedient to God and you ignore the Lord's instruction, these are the eight consequences that can happen. One, we end up listening to the wrong voice. Uh, we listen to the devil. Uh, we listen to the evil one. We listen to the cacophony of Voices that aren't in line with God. Number two, we're easily deceived. 
when you ignore the Lord's instruction, you can get deceived, right? And that's what happened. They were deceived, right? Satan said, you shall not surely die. You're just going to know as much as God. Well, when they ate of the fruit, they didn't know as much as God, mother. All they knew was they was naked. <laughs> and they hid themselves. That's all they knew. They didn't know as much as God. So you get deceived. And then the third consequence of ignoring the Lord's instruction is you yield to pride and independence. Right? We're not listening to the Lord. You get prideful. Thank you doing it. You know, you can do it without him. Right? The fourth thing, consequence of ignoring the Lord's instruction, is you make decisions that appeal to the flesh. You're ignoring God's instruction, so who are you listen? You listen to yourself and your own flesh. We already said, we said Sunday, that flesh can get us in trouble, right? The fifth consequence of ignoring the Lord's instruction, we make excuse of our wrongs and we blame other people. You don't listen to God's instruction, you, 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 ex you excuse your wrong and you point the finger at somebody else. Well, they did this, they did that. The, set, the sixth consequence of ignoring the Lord's instruction. We suffer the consequences. We don't like to suffer. We sing that song, be lying. I learned how to suffer. Huh? But we, we don't want the Lord. Lord, don't put no suffering on me. Oh, no, Lord, I don't want no suffering. I don't want no. Pass me not, oh, gentle Savior. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't give me no suffering. Right? But you suffer the consequences when you ignore the Lord's instruction. Number seven, we cause others around us to suffer because we're ignoring the Lord's instruction. Others suffer because of us, right? Because of the sin of Adam and Eve, guess what? All of us, huh, have sinned, right? We all in the bucket now, huh? The one man came sin, right? On all of us. We all have the Adamic nature. But thank God for the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, huh? And he brought forgiveness of sin to all men. The eighth and final consequence of ignoring the Lord's instruction according to our book, Living the Extraordinary Life, we miss out on God's best hmm? because we ignore the Lord's instruction. We miss out on the Lord's best, on God's best. Huh? We better start listening to the Lord. Hmm? You can't go wrong. We used to sing the song, where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him all the way, right? Consequences of ignoring the Lord's instruction. Don't ignore the Lord's instruction. Huh? Huh? When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, yes to your will, yes to your way. God bless you tonight. Thank God for each of you. Thank God for your faithfulness and your uh, participation in uh, our trivia and in our Bible study. We hope that you are gaining some insight. We hope that we've shared some principles that you can apply to your day-to-day -day life. No good. It's no good to us if we can't apply the Bible to our day-to-day -day life. It's more than just a good read. It's about life application. And when we start applying the word, we find ourselves maturing and growing closer and closer to God. God bless you tonight. May he keep you, may his face forever shine upon you. Um, Lee, we'll have a closing, we have a closing song and then we'll share our, our prayer of dismissal and give a little blessing and uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, and have some pie. I think we got enough for y'all tonight. I need the old, I need the every hour. Y'all sing it with me. I 
Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for the perfect ways in which you time our encounters with you. Thank you that you knew who would be here and you knew what we would receive tonight. So Lord, thank you. We pray that seed that has been sown tonight has fallen on good ground receptive hearts help us oh god to follow your way live by your word and help us to do your will lord we thank you for those who make commitments to and look forward to our discourses, our study, our trivia. Thank you for their interests. Bless us, O oh God, uh, with the blessings you see we stand in need of, even as we uh, take a, a break. Lord, we pray that you would keep us with the zeal and the knowledge, a desire to have a knowledge of your word. God, we thank you tonight as we prepare to leave this place, go to our different homes and destinations. Lord, would you keep us safe? We know danger seems to be lurking on every corner. But Lord, would you put a hedge of protection around us, protect us as we go to our homes and different destinations. And then when we arrive, give us arriving mercy. Help us to find everything and everyone just as well as when we left, that no thief broke in, no fire broke out, no flood overtook. And then, Lord, we lay down to sleep tonight, whatever anxiety, worries, whatever troubled us this day. Lord, help us to lay all of that at your feet. Forgive us of our sins this day. Give us peaceful night's rest. And if it be your will to wake us up in the morning, help us to be mindful enough to greet you with a good morning, Lord. Thank you for another day. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. In John 9, 4 and 5. God bless you. You have been dismissed. Lord, thank you for the pie. May it not bother our sugar. May we not overeat and overindulge. Give us wisdom. Remove all greediness and and help us to enjoy the fellowship. 